Every summer it feels like there's at least one fish mystery that I have to solve. Last year it was the golden white cloud minnow fry. What happened was we had a, a bowl that we had some sylvinia from the golden white cloud minnow pond. There ended up being a ton of fry in there. I just assumed that those were white cloud minnow fry. I didn't really pay that much attention to them. I just fed them and then eventually figured out they were just all rice fish. So it wasn't a huge deal because we weren't trying to get a bunch. This year it's a little different. We took our fish out of their main tank and we did it at the right time. So they had been spawning with not the influence of temperature, just the daylight cycle being longer. And so this year we were able to get a bunch of fry that are 100% golden white cloud minnows. You can even tell now that they've grown up a little bit. That whole mystery was eventually solved by me coming down to the fact that I must have taken Sylvania from a rice fish pond, put it into the white cloud minnow pond, kind of forgotten about that, and then taken those plants from the pond and put it into that separate little thing where all the fish hatched out. A few weeks ago, we were messing around with the ponds and I noticed that we had some fry in the bootleg rainbow shiner pond. And this time I didn't do what I did last year. So the sylvinia that ended up in that thing was sylvinia from the big tank inside. The only fish in that aquarium is rainbow fish, rummy nose tetras, and a random Siamese algae eater. So no rice fish. There's no way it's any of those fish. It has to be the bootleg rainbow shiners that made those fish. Or so you would think, right? Like, it, they're not rainbow shiners. It turns out the six fish that are in here are indeed, once again, rice fish. So how did these fish end up in the bootleg rainbow shiners pond? Well, I figured it out. It was not a very hard mystery for me to solve. I had to trace my steps all the way back to the other things in the pond. I knew it couldn't be the Sylvania. It had to be the other pond plants that we moved around. The plants that were in that rainbow shiner pond originated from the reject rice fish retirement home that we have over on the side of the yard. Now, a lot of those fish aren't at even the age or the maturity level to be breeding, um, but it's not impossible. They could have laid some eggs in there. What's more likely is that we then moved those plants into for only a couple days into the platinum Madaka rice fish bowl that's over in the side yard, closer to where everything is. I don't even have a place to sit to talk to you. I'm just gonna, okay. I think it was only one of the grasses that was in that rice fish bowl for, like I said, like a day or maybe two. And that's really all it took for those fish to deposit a couple eggs, a handful of them probably, onto the blades of grasses. And that's where those fish came from. So unfortunately, uh, not the best news in the world. We're kind of at a point where I'm panicking because it's getting to be halfway through the summer and we don't have any rainbow shine or fry yet. Those bootleg fish, uh, I would be happy to get some fry, but they're not the priority. The priority is the really awesome ones that we got from White Cloud Dynasty, the really colorful ones. But um, I have some unfortunate news in that department as well. This tank is going through, okay, whoa, we don't want to scare the fish. This tank is going through some issues, obviously. We're totally green watering out here because we don't have a lot of plants. We don't have any plants in here. We're under filtering. We were doing a fish in cycle. This is something that just happens. So um, it's making it difficult to be able to see what's going on in here. Impossible to be able to tell if we have eggs. I could just pull this out and do a little bit more of a deep dive, but it would be nice to spot this and just be able to tell without having to pull this whole apparatus out. Furthermore, you've probably already seen this dude. I just found him a couple of minutes ago. I scraped him off the floor. Uh, it's very dry in here. The dehumidifier runs all the time. So I have no idea how long he was on the floor for, but he is completely crispy and pretty red. Hopefully it's not my really turned up red male that we had in here. Definitely not chill. I've been <laughs> doing a bunch of water changes on this tank, trying to get it clearer and I just, I left the water level a little too high. These fish can jump like 10 feet into the air though. So I don't know, if, even if it was down here, he probably still could have jumped. We need to figure out a lid for this thing. I think it was last week's video. I showed you, we confirmed we had eggs in the bottom of this bin and we totally did. What happened was I, I was gonna wait anyway. I was gonna wait like another day or two before pulling the basket out, trying to get some more. Uh, we had a little bit of a family emergency. We had to be gone for I think it was, I was gone for two days. So when I came back, that I could visibly see the mold down there growing on the egg. So pulled the basket out. That basket is this basket. It's obviously turned into a bunch of green water. This is something that it was clear. 
this tank was clear a couple of days ago. This has all happened relatively quickly, but there is nothing in here except for a ton of microscopic algae. So the eggs have all but disintegrated and I don't know why this is still here. I think part of me is still hoping that something's gonna hatch out of that, but there's no way. So I'm going back to the drawing board on all of this. Um, first thing is with this one down on the bottom of this rack, it's just, it's too hard to get in and out of this thing. So what I wanna do is move this up here. We wanna to totally change the way that we have this whole system set up and just get everything optimized for trying to collect eggs and preventing fish from jumping out now. He will now become part of the tree. At least I like to think so. But yeah, we're back here in the rice fish corner. Everything's doing really good over here. We're making a lot of progress. We're getting a bunch of eggs and I, we're gonna have so many fish at the end of the season. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of them. But before we start moving stuff around in the fish room, just wanna give you a quick little shot of what we're doing over here. So we are moving fish into tubs that we really wanna get eggs from. So all of the sapphire lames, they've been in here. I think the females might be done. We just don't want them to do what the other rice fish do and rub their eggs into plants. That way the babies don't get eaten and we can collect them. So we have a couple so far, just started doing this over the last day or two. So pretty much a new mop. I feel bad for the Yokozuras over here. They're just in a little shady green water pond, but they are, they're pumping out a ton of eggs. Probably need to put this guy in the tub. This tub is, I know it looks gross, but perfect for the baby fish that pop out of here. So there's a couple, maybe we can see them here. They're just starting to hatch out. There's one dude right there. I don't know, he might, he might not be completely alive. You're not gonna get 100% of these fish to make it, but let's see, can you see that guy? Right in the middle of the, like, right in the middle of the reflection, of course. But it's all starting, so uh, once we get enough fish in there, or I'm uncomfortable with the amount of baby fish that are out here exposed to the elements, then I bring them inside and we put them up on one of the racks. I'm just waiting for this female to be done, I think. Does it look like she has any eggs on her still? I think she got rid of them. This fish had a ton of them on her belly. There's a couple in here, actually. This mop was pretty fresh when I put it in, so looks like they, yeah, they might be done for the day. We'll get those guys back in here shortly. But yeah, that's the, that's basically the daily routine. Something that's super cool about these fish is just how smart they are when it comes to temperature and regulating their temperature. So as you can see, column empty, no fish in it, except for, well, except for that guy. All right, he's checking it out. Maybe he'll go up to the top, but if we hit this, Oh, it's only 85. I thought it would be hotter if we check the bottom of the pond, or I guess the, the top of the main body, 80. So five degree difference. Obviously the glass here is picking up a little bit more heat. Um, and it's only, it's not even halfway through the day yet, but I was hoping to prove that the fish wouldn't go into like 98 degree water when it's not 98. But tomorrow or the next day is gonna be like 105. So maybe that'll be a better test of it. But I just really think that the fish aren't gonna go into that column when it's that hot. They already seem to not go into it in the middle of the day and they primarily go into it in the mornings and the evenings when it's just a little bit cooler. I just, I don't know, I think that's really cool. This pond, however, has been getting pretty hot. They got the barbecue covering at almost 90. Um, I don't know how much that helps, probably not very much at all, but as you can see, there's, I mean, there's no way you can see down into that. The fish are all just chilling. Uh, need to move this still. But anyway, that's the update on all the rice fish stuff. Let's get back to the important things we need to do. All right, buckets everywhere and things to trip on, check. Water is drained down, check. I decided to just drain the water down really low and not move the fish because in my mind, this was less traumatic than trying to net them all up and less hard because they're so fast. I mean, there's just, 
they don't want to be caught. So I'm going to attempt to pick up the tank now. I think, uh, I think I can do it. We're just going to move it right up above where they were at. And there's it's going to give me a lot more headroom and easy access to do things. I just got to find spots for all of this crap. This might be a terrible idea, but we're going to go for it. Should probably move these first. The water is just going to look this way. Now we're going to slowly start adding water back. One downside to this fish room is that we don't have temperature controlled water. We're at the mercy of what it is out of the tap, out of the hose. So we'll just add that water back real slowly. Maybe we'll temperature adjust some stuff manually. Ultimately, I think these fish can take a little bit of a shock, but we always, we always like to baby our fish, right? We just, we want to be extra careful, especially with these ones. I've always known this about the rainbow shiners. They like to hang out down at the bottom of the tank and they like to have cover and just watching these fish and their behavior right now. I know they're freaking out because of the, what we're doing to them but i can't help but feel like they just want a place to hide right like they're trying to get under that sponge so i think that's going to be part of what we do today is just try and figure out how to get them some kind of cover i don't think it's going to take away from their egg scattering and hanging out in the new little basket that i've made um, i just want to do something nice for them because I, f I feel like they're missing that from this very plain jane breeding setup and it just honestly it makes me feel kind of bad that they don't have a spot. So we're, we're gonna do that too. So it's been kind of like over the course of the day, we filled the tank up real slow and we got a decent amount of space there. I'm kind of comfortable with that. Fish can jump way higher than that, but we'll just have to live with it for now until we can get a lid. Did a little bit of cleanup, uh, sponge filter still operating, not enough filtration for this tank. I was definitely having to squirt in some extra bacteria to get the nitrite all consumed. We just need a bigger filter and a beefier system in this tank, specifically because we, you know, we don't have any plants, we don't have like a seasoned substrate and a lot of biological activity. And that's why we kind of formed all that biological activity in the water column, which we don't want. Why am I doing that with my hand? I think what will help is putting an additional filter on this and actually putting like a proper canister filter, something that can really trap some material and hopefully help keep the water clean. We're also gonna add some plants too. Kinda sad, but all I have is this about of dwarf sag. Everything else has been earmarked and used. I need to do a big fat plant order because we have more tanks to do anyway that I wanna put plants in, but this is gonna have to do you're gonna have to use your imagination. It's gonna take time for it to grow all, you know, also. It's not gonna be what the fish want right off the bat, but I think give it a little bit of time, have it grow up a little tall. I think that will make them chill out a little bit more. Maybe, I don't know, but it's gonna make me feel a little bit better about the whole situation, so we're gonna go for it. How's that for a camera angle? Kind of terrible, but it'll have to do. It's kind of a sad amount of plants, but I think, you know, you just gotta use your imagination. In uh, a month or two, it'll look it'll look a lot better. I found this Fluval, what is this, a 106 on the side of the road. Figured it would be a pretty good thing to use, finally use. It should help to just like collect most of the material in the tank and at least keep that out of the water. All the overfeeding that I'm doing, it should help to reduce the amount of that. Obviously it's gonna trap into the filter and can still be an issue, but it should at least help with some of the particulate and some of the issues and just help the tank overall and make it a little bit better for the long run. So I'm gonna get this thing set up and then we'll talk about the other cool thing that I made for this tank, which is the whole point of it. Siphon has been, whoa, okay, we're, uh, hello. I guess that's why you have a fish room, so you don't do this in your house? Oh my God. 
Aha, yes, there's a, there's a ring you're supposed to. It's been a while, okay guys? Hey, at least this time we don't have to prime it too much. It's already completely filled with water. Is that power strip wet? Uh, probably not, not wet enough. Is that good? Is that a good sound? Is that working? What is happening? Definitely not working. It's working, maybe? We just gotta do this a bunch of times? Good God. I am literally so dumb. I was so close, I got the O-ring. There's the other piece that covers the thing in there, the motor. I sh should probably just cut this out so I don't look totally stupid, but I'm not going to because this is what happens. You don't pay attention and you're, you know, you do things like this and you know, whatever. It's, uh, it's been a while. So we're all good. We're about to have this filter all up and running. Uh, it is not idiot proof though. This is an absolute disaster. Okay, put the, put the piece on. Which way does it go? All right, this is gonna, it's gonna overflow again. Just, oh my God. I'm so over this. It's, is it gonna leak again? What is happening, bro? Can I just, what? I'm gonna get so electrocuted right now. Can you just, why are you leaking, bro? I gotta clean, I gotta clean this up. I, I can't do this right now. Oh, cool, now there's sand in the O-ring, sweet. That's great. All right, one more try. Input in. God, I hate everything about this. Do I need to pump it? You're full of water, why are you not working? Air out, please. It was working, now it's like, that's not supposed to be the flow. Now it's up, there we, up, up. I think, I think that's it. Uh, that was, that was like a whole thing. That was, that was bad. That was a nightmare. I, I almost threw this thing against a brick wall somewhere. Uh, we need, and then, and then it just stops. What is happening? Oh, uh, oh, uh, is it gonna work? There it is. So we obviously need to modify this and get this lower. I don't like this um, amount of splash or noise. I hate it actually. Maybe we can just pull this down and then leave it kind of in the tank a little bit but I bet it's not, no, it's not flowing as good. No, it's good. Okay, so we can do that. We've achieved the goal. That was, that was a whole thing. That was, geez, dude. But now our rainbow shiners have the most flow I think they've ever experienced, which is cool. It's more like a, like a little river, a short little stout river. Needed a break after that whole debacle. Uh, but one of the benefits of the fish room having the dehumidifier running all the time is that it dries up pretty quickly. Like it could always be worse. So the last thing that I want to do to this tank before we go to bed tonight is to get the new breeding apparatus set up. So I made this guy, we got some new bins here. I really wanted to get a lower profile basket. Not that the fish couldn't swim into it before, but just for an ease of getting it in and out of the tank but then also to have the fish have an easier time get into it. I'm not really sure if that matters, but it's the same principle. I just found a different container. It's a different plastic. I still had to cut out a bottom and then glue this plastic mesh stuff to the bottom of it. Actually, instead of the glue, I decided to silicone it this time just to make it really strong and I had the extra night to wait. But yeah, the result is this basket that is lower profile and it has a decent size space on the bottom, no need to put rocks down below it like the other one. And I'm really just hoping that the fish don't hate this setup as they all run and freak out because I'm doing something weird in their tank. It's gonna sit right here. I think I spaced the plants out perfectly. So that's the plant area, that's the egg laying area. And you can see that sits, I think, a little bit better in the tank. It should be a lot easier to work with, that's for sure. I almost forgot about the rocks. We gotta get all these guys back. Don't freak out, guys. Don't freak out. Don't get scared. Don't be scared. I'm just dumping a bunch of rocks in your tank. It's probably really loud. And just like that. Nope. Oh. I missed. 
We don't need like a ton of rocks in here and I'm just going based off of what I've seen on White Cloud Dynasty's YouTube channel. He and I think most other people I've seen do this don't use a clear basket. I really don't think that should be an issue but I was thinking like okay the fish to a fish it might seem kind of weird. The clear you can see through it it seems less protected and then maybe something about the white bottom is unnatural to them. Maybe they don't like it as much as I think they do. Or maybe I'm just projecting and overthinking way too much. That's probably what I'm doing, but uh, I guess I'm just, I'm so desperate to get some healthy, good, viable eggs off of these guys that I, I feel like I just have to do this. And now we're down to 11 rainbow shiners. And it, I don't know which fish it was. I don't know if it was one of my good males or one of my good females, I have no idea. I think you can understand where my mental state is coming from, but this should be, this should be good. We'll get, we'll get them back in a routine. We'll start feeding them. We'll do um, you know, specific feeding. Like now that we're pushing water away from this area, hopefully it's easier to not get food down in the bottom of this, which contributes to the mold. And then I think ultimately what we're gonna do is just pull this sponge filter out of here because it's not really serving that much of a purpose. Like we have a really good filter set up here as long as it works and doesn't leak. All that really good bio rings from the pond and just using circulating the existing water in this tank. Hopefully it stays clear and hopefully this dwarf sag grows and helps to contribute to the opposite of the green water, which is what we want. We want to have really clear water. That's why we put the purigen in the filter and we just hope for the best. Oh my God. Do you see it? I'm going to freak out. I'm going to freak out if I look at this in the camera and it moves. Oh, are you eating my fish? Guys, I hate snakes. I, oh, I hate how they move. Ooh, get out of here. Get, is that a cobra? Bro. Oh. Well, today kind of sucked. I'll see you tomorrow. Back out of the tank the next day. Glad yesterday is over. Um, the fish are kind of balled up in the same area that I left them last night. Right now I have the filter turned off because I thought maybe the flow might have been too much for them. They were just sort of behaving that way. They seem to be a little looser now that I have it unplugged and it's been a little bit, but they could just be getting used to the new layout of the tank, even though it's basically the same. Or maybe it has something to do with the fact that, oh, I just spooked them. See, they're, they're very skittish. Uh, maybe it has to do with the fact that I removed a bunch of the Sylvania. They had a little bit of cover above, and I think maybe that gave them a little, maybe that just gave them a little bit of peace of mind from the top. Again, all these things are me guessing. I have no idea, but I don't know, something's gotta give here. I think I might just try putting another handful or basically trying to cover almost the entire top with the Sylvania again. It's just a huge pain in the butt when it comes to removing the basket, as you probably could tell. Like it just gets everywhere and it's it sucks. All this back and forth and changing things and trying to get things perfect is making me a little nervous just because I know the more I change stuff, the longer it's gonna take to get the eggs that I wanna have. So I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm figuring out what I should do as I go here. You could probably tell. We just need a little bit more time and it is kind of weird. Like these fish are supposed to like current. They come from streams and rivers where the water's moving. I thought maybe, I mean, who knows? Maybe they go into an area where there's still rocks where there's no current and that's where they spawn. I just don't know. That's, I guess, the test that we're gonna run right now, but I also don't want to leave the filter off because we just set it up. So giving you guys all the gruesome little details of this entire process, but I, I'm i gonna get some eggs. I'm gonna figure this out before the season's over. And we are still gonna get those fish outside at some point. I just turned the water back on and you see how they were kind of balled up before, but this way they all ball up and point the same direction, almost like a rainbow fish hanging out in the flow of water. So I don't know, it's probably subtle and maybe I'm just imagining things, but they don't seem to be super happy in this spot. Maybe I need to move the rocks over to where they are right now because that's the area specifically in this tank current slash setup 
that they like, I don't know. What I really wanna do is get another one of these things, one of these prefab planter pots, line it, and but I just need one that's a little bit bigger because I don't love the size of this. I wish it was basically twice the size. That way it would roughly, it would hold about, I think, just under 40 gallons, which I think would be perfect. Problem is, is that I can't seem to find something like that that exists. I'm sure it does, but at least the Lowe's by my house uh, doesn't have it. Maybe Wilco does. That'll probably be on the list of things to do today, but the other option is to, of course, just make one myself, but I, I really just don't want to take the time it would take to build that, and I'm, it would probably end up costing roughly the same amount. Buying boards, probably having to stain them. I mean, I could definitely do it for cheaper than that, but you, I mean, I want it to kind of be like that, um, and it's just going to take time and money either way. So, but who knows? That's definitely for another day. Uh, I'm going to keep working on these rainbow shiners. We're going to figure it out together and I'm going to let you know how it goes. Thanks for hanging out with me today and going through the kind of weird fish mysteries that aren't that weird. They actually always make total sense when you think about it for long enough, but next week we'll have some kind of an update for you and maybe a new project with these guys or maybe somebody else. I don't know, but thanks again for watching and we'll see you next week.